Climate Neutral Group's carbon project manager, Gray Maguire, says South Africa should start exploring cleaner electricity generating technologies to limit its emission of greenhouse gases. He says the country, which is the world's 12th biggest emitter of greenhouse gases, can't keep waiting for financial support from developed nations. We're now joined by Maguire to speak more on what the country should be doing. Uh, Gray, I was quite surprised, actually, and uh, I think some people uh, will be, too, that we're 12th on the list and our emissions per capita are quite high. Where is that coming from? And I know not all greenhouse gases are created equal. So uh, wh what are we putting out I into the atmosphere the most? Well, obviously, uh, given our heavy reliance on coal-fired power uh, from ESCOM, uh, our overall carbon intensivity of our economy is far worse than uh, even that 12th position that we that we see ourselves ranked globally. In fact, in terms of units of uh, GDP, uh, we are the fifth most carbon intensive economy in the world um, and behind really like small countries like uh, uh, Pilau and uh, uh, Uzbekistan. So really, I mean, like we have such abundant uh, resources available from a renewable energy perspective. The fact that we continue to support and propose the kinds of solutions like the car power ships, and now also very recently the, uh, the, the RFP, the re request for proposals, and the initiation of the tender process uh, by Gwede Montashi to have 2,500 megawatts of nuclear power, which globally takes on average 15 years in order to be implement, to be able to implement just doesn't make sense in uh, the kind of uh, lens where we can look at uh, programs like the, the Renewable Energy Independent Power Producer Procurement Program um, that was that had us positioned as the fastest growing green economy uh, in, as a country in the world in 2015. Um, and sort of takes two and a half years worth of lead time in order to be able to bring on power. Uh, why we've stalled that process, uh, which we literally halted for four years, uh, is beyond anyone's reckoning. If, if we have such abundant resources, th then why is there, uh, it seems, a reluctance to expedite the switch to cleaner energy? What's, what's holding us back? Look, I think that there are a number of features uh, that, um, that don't play into the hands of renewable energy, most notably the fact that uh, the historical base that South Africa's economy is built upon, the minerals and energy complex in South Africa, uh, you know, is, is, is based around uh, big mining houses, uh, which are now is trying to exit coal left and right. So we are seeing Exaro, we're seeing uh, South 32, we're seeing Anglo, all unbundling their coal assets uh, across South Africa, all uh, sort of handing them on down towards smaller and smaller companies um, as they try and limit their exposure to what are rapidly becoming stranded coal assets. Um, so, you know, like th there is definitely a power struggle there. And if we look at what happened with Madupi and Kusile, uh, Chancellor House, which is the investment arm of the ANC, was heavily invested in Bateman Power Africa and in Hitachi Power Africa, we both got contracts uh, for the, the production of the facilities at Majupi and Kusile. So those kinds, of, um, those kinds of vested interests definitely have implications for uh, independent power projects that perhaps are not quite as well invested by uh, well-connected political organizations. Oh, great. Developed nations have, uh, they have committed to giving money to developing nations in order for them to transition to cleaner energy. But you're saying we shouldn't wait for those funds. We need to be doing our own things to, to, to make that switch. Uh, very quickly, give me examples of how we could make this work. Yeah, so I mean, one of the, the big problems that we've got is that we're waiting for concessional finance before we make commitments towards our emission reduction commitments, the, the nationally determined contributions. Whereas we actually have architecture in place in South Africa currently that can allow for the flow of carbon finance from the first world into South Africa. So for example, if we look at our carbon offset administration system, what that allows for is it allows for the generation of uh, carbon offsets from projects that would facilitate adaptation. Uh, we've now seen like the, our, our company has launched the AgriCarbon program, for example, that allows Western countries to invest in climate resilient agricultural development in South Africa. Those projects 
obviously limit the amount of greenhouse gases that go into the, the atmosphere, but also at the same time improve the resilience of people that are most at risk from climate change. Uh, we're projecting that at even at one and a half degrees centigrade increase, uh, Southern Africa will see a, an average temperature increase of three degrees, and that will be catastrophic for people who are rurally based and dependent on agriculture. Well, Gray, thank you so much for fleshing that out for us. We appreciate your time. Gray Maguire, the Carbon Project Manager at the Climate Neutral Group. Still ahead here on Newslink, government says if you want to watch live sports again, you need to get the jab as they launch a new vaccination campaign. We'll cross there after the break.